Hey, it's Eldon here. Welcome, Dad, to back to another one of Crazy Dad's Coleman Projects. We're going to do a lantern here today, just for the fun of it. And yeah, I'm sure there's been a hundred of them done online. That's all right. I'm doing it because I'm having fun with it. Just a good way to relax for me. So I'll flip the camera around here, show you which one we're working on, and we'll launch into it. There we go. This is a 220... What did I say? An E. Uh, can you get where we can see it here? Kind of just barely there. That's not helping. Let's try this. There we go. 220E from February of 1960. The 1960s really plain. The two, you can just barely see it with the rust in it there. So we're going to clean this one up. It's got all that spray paint on the bottom of it. Somebody tells me that there might be something special about that. But you know what? It's just sloppy spray paint. I don't see any markings really identifying what it is. So we might do something a little special with this one. We'll see. First of all, I'm going to take it apart, clean it up, and get it working. And so I'm going to start diving into it here and see exactly what it's going to need. So let's get the camera on the tripod and I'll start taking it apart. Alrighty, so here we go. Let's start with the simple stuff. We'll just get the vent off of it. Take the nut off. So that nut is a brass nut that I can't tell if it's got some kind of a nickel or chrome coating on it. I don't think it does. I think it's just a brass nut. We'll uh, get my can for parts here so we can hang on to that stuff. The vent off. So the vent on this one is kind of fair condition. We've got uh, you know, obviously that big chip here. we got the damage that's typical to these from tightening the nut down too tight. And then somebody's dinged it against something on that edge, so we got that chip. But all in all, I've seen much worse vents um, for what we're going to do with it. That'll be just fine. Oh, look, yeah, I remember this problem. So somebody's suited this one up from lighting it with a match and burning everything in that way. But we're going to clean all this up and uh, move forward from there. Here's our vent, or our globe. We have just a standard Coleman red parallelogram, I think is what everybody calls these. Um, I'm not even positive that's the correct one for this lantern, but I don't care, frankly. I want to get it running. Get that over here out of the way. All right, now, next question is, I wonder if the thing actually pumps up any pressure when we try to pressurize it. Let's give it a shot here. This is one I just picked up from an antique store. I really haven't done anything with it except label it and hang it up on my shelf. But, uh, ooh, needs definitely needs some oil, but I think we got a good pump cup in it. I think it's pumping stuff up. So, let's pull that apart. Um, open my cap. I didn't hear any pressure, but there might not have been much in it. Um... The uh, rubber seal in there is not in great shape, so we'll get that out of there and replace it. So this has got a red cap on it, obviously a replacement off of something, more than likely off of a stove. Uh, but it should work just fine for what we're going to do. Put that in there. Actually, let's show you how to get that screw out of there. Um, because a lot of times people will... Uh, there we go. Okay, let's get this, get that screw out of there, and uh, you go to turn it, and you go, no, oh, it's just turning. And that's because the screw and that piece that holds the seal are actually just floating in there. So unless you can get a hold of that and keep it from turning, you're never going to get the screw out of it. So here's the flip trick to doing that. 
without having the special tools. First of all, you got to be coordinated enough to get it to screw on. But uh, screw your cap down and tighten it down good and tight. Then, that what that does is that wedges with that seal, wedges the thing in place and holds it so that you can take the screw out of it. And uh, some of them are going to be much more hard to get out than that. I've had to actually tighten these down with pliers sometimes to get them out. But uh, yeah, we'll loosen it with pliers. Don't know my own strength, right? There we go. Now we have the two pieces separate, separated. And they're both brass, so that's cool. They will polish up really nice and uh, make something kind of neat there. All right. Now, make sure this opens. Yeah, that valve works. So... We will take that valve handle off. And be gentle with this stuff. You don't need to go crazy with it. If it won't come out, stop because you'll end up breaking something. And don't ask me how I know that. Um, As we're washing that, that little aluminum plate in there with the instructions on it will come out and separate itself. So now we've got that off. Let's pull the pump out of there and see what it looks like. And if you're careful, you can get that out of there without scratching anything up. So there's my private label for them. I'll hang on to that. That looks like it's in fairly good shape. Now, actually, let's open that up. Okay. And, yep, there we go. Oh, it's got a rubber pump cup in it, which actually looks to be in pretty good shape. I think somebody actually might have put a new one in there. But that's in really nice shape. It's just going to need some oil on it, I think. This thing's been beat up a pretty significantly there. I think you can see that. So, I don't know. I may try to straighten that out a little bit. Huh. Both sides have been. That's interesting. But we'll put that in there. Get the uh, check the valve... Uh, stopper or whatever you want, the plunger guide out of there. I think that one looks like it'll still work just fine. Threads seem to be good. I got a little bit of a ridge there, but uh, as long as we can get it to go back in there and seal so that it doesn't leak uh, pressure back out the pump, I think we'll be alright with that one. I might... I might touch it a little bit. We'll see. All right, so that gives us something pretty good. Uh-huh. So, normally, if you shake them, you can hear the ball inside of the check valve down there rattle around. And this one's not doing that. So we are going to need to take that check valve out of there eventually. I actually bought the tool to do that with. Let's uh, just see if I'm smart enough to figure out how to use it here. There we go. Let's see which. Got to get the correct bolt in it that matches the threads on that deal. So we'll go like this and thread it down into the check valve. I want to get it far enough in there so I don't pull the threads out of the check valve. That would be a disaster. All right, now we've got this piece that's designed to go down and seat in the screwdriver thread of the check valve. 
There we go. And we'll put the nut on it to hold the thing all together so it doesn't slip out. Like that. You gotta find us the correct wrench there. Put that one. Yep, there we go. Again, we want to be gentle with these things because we're Yeah, I don't know how much entertainment value I'm providing you, but uh... There, that's snugged in on there good. Now let's see if we get anywhere. Aha! Score! So now I know for sure that I need to tighten this nut down with a wrench instead of just hand tight it like I did the first time here because that kept the tool from going all the way down into the screwdriver slot on the valve. And uh, it allowed me to strip out almost. I, I didn't ruin it. I managed to get it apart, but it kept me from... Uh, or it almost allowed me to slip out of that and completely mess it up. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. There we go. If you look in there closely, see how this is the slot that it was supposed to be in, but I was turning it and it wasn't all the way down in the slot, so it wasn't gripping it good and was trying to turn it out of the slot and it actually messed those up. So, this is still reusable. Um, I really wouldn't want to do that on one that I was really going to make super pretty. You know, try to really restore it right. So, lesson learned for me, make sure you tighten that nut down with a wrench. But I'll come back in here with a file and clean that up and get that to working. Um, yeah, that, that check ball is glued in place by the fuel uh, residue that's in there. And so I will soak that uh, probably in some carburetor cleaner. I think we'll probably clean that up. So that's what will happen with that one. We'll put the tool away now. on with our disassembly. So, let's get the generator out. I think I can get it to come free next. I'm taking that nut out of this middle right there. Generators are usually pretty easy to get out. I have found one the other day that was a lot harder. I'm going to get it to move up so that I can get the Pricker rod loose from. Oh, I thought I had that loosened up. So, in order to get the pricker rod out of its slot in here, you have to turn this till it's up so that it pushes the pricker rod connector up there. And we are not moving, so... I think, then let's go back a step. Is that right? Yeah. I'm going to hand tighten that back on. Now I'm going to try to get this main nut down in the middle there loosened up so that I can then untwist this whole uh, generator and air tube mechanism there from the lower part of the valve. So let's see if we can do that. There we go. As you can 
see getting things like this loose is sometimes not a simple operation just to get enough um, turn on your wrench. I've got to keep turning the lantern itself. Because my wrench binds up against some of the other parts in there. Should be getting close to where it'll come off of there by hand. There we go. Now, that nut does not come off of there. It simply loosens up, and what that does is loosens up the pressure holding this down. Um, it's, so it's holding the cage down, it's holding the collar down to the tank, and all of those kind of things. Now, we should be able to spin this whole mechanism by getting hold of it down here and break it free from the valve itself. And be and what will happen is I'll have to spin the generator and air tubes and the uh, cage and the bale all at the same time to get them to come loose. Let's try a different tool here. Let's see if this will actually pop loose from there. Not wanting too easily. <laughs> Okay, so now we're probably going to need to put this thing into my lantern vise in order to stabilize it so that I can uh, have enough torque to get that out of there. So, we'll pause here for a minute, get the lantern vise uh, set up where we can use it, and then we'll be back to show you how that works. There we go. Poor little lantern captured by the horrible lantern clamping device. So that's what this is for, is to clamp that thing in there so that we can get a little more torque on things to hopefully get her loosened up. So let's see now if we can get that free without breaking it. All right. There we go. That's what we're after. Now see how that turns the whole generator mechanism and the cage and the bale all at the same time that's the probably one of the hardest parts on these 220 228s is doing that all and actually taking it apart's not so hard as to putting it back together but uh there we go all right got her apart that's what she looks like on the bottom now this will come out of there so that we can work on it separately, like so. And there is our cage. It looks like it could use a little bit of body work on it. And if you look along the bottom edge right here, you can see that it's pulled this way down in there by probably being a little bit over tight. And Everything actually looks fairly straight and square on it otherwise, so we'll just really clean it up and see what we come up with here. 
I have an idea that might be kind of fun on this one. So, set the cage aside. While I've got the thing still in the vise, we're going to get our uh, rest of our valve out of there, so I'll set that aside. Get the collar off, which uh, slides over like this, then you tip it up and it rolls off. So this collar's not too bad a shape. I think uh, it's obvious it's got quite a few wrinkles in it, so we might need to do a little massaging on that with a body hammer to get those out of there. But we'll clean it up, see what it looks like. I think I'll be able to polish that up to where it'll look pretty nice, actually. Okay. So now we have the valve in here. And uh, these valves, you can get them out most of the time by turning this whole mechanism upside down in your bench vise and clamping your bench vise across here and then grabbing the fount itself and unscrewing it off of it. Sometimes it takes a lot of leverage to be able to break that loose, but once it breaks free, they come right off. Uh, but since I already have it in this vise, I'm just going to take it apart using the vise. It'll be much simpler than wrestling it the other direction. So, back to our trusty wrench here. And we put a little pressure on. Oh, let's see. So, the other thing you want to do here, pay attention to the direction that this was clocked in relation to your filler cap and your pump piston or pump tube here because that's where you want to put it back to and so this one is lined up centered right on the coleman logo on the fount so that's what we want to remember when we go to put it back together so here we go that actually came out pretty easily probably would have come out just fine in my vise without having to use the the clamp for the fount. The reason I built this is because I have a 275 that uh, I can't get the valve out of with my vise. I just can't get enough leverage on it. One of the things I found, so this thread diameter right here, so this is a 220, 228 size, and again, I'm not familiar enough to tell you what every one of them is. So the little single mantle 200As have a smaller size here. And therefore, less leverage, the, the threads have less leverage on the threads in your tank. And so it's easier to break them loose in the vise. This one has a medium sized set of threads. But the 275 actually has a much larger diameter uh, valve here and the threads are bigger and they can exert more leverage on the tank so on that one anyway it was I just couldn't get it loose now I do have another 275 that I did take apart using my vice method and it worked but uh, this particular one that I was working on the other day just wouldn't come apart that way so here we go um, this is, I'm going to get this thing off the bench and then we'll talk a little bit more about parts here. So, let's get it out of the vise while we're here. This is a ultra cheap thing just made out of some scraps of particle board, but you can see that it did the job just fine. There are instructions online. At some of the other guys' YouTube channels and websites on how to make these things, and uh, I'll tell you what, that was worth all the time that I spent on it just to make it that simple to do it. So, there we have our fount is all stripped down and ready to do whatever we want to do with it. I'm gonna get back to that later. What I'm gonna do with this one, get it out of our way, get the lantern vice out of the way. So here's the two pieces that we took apart out of there. Now these fit together like so. And this is what you have to work with when you're 
taking one apart. So, put the handle back on here. And we'll show you kind of how these things work. If you look closely here, there's a little tiny pin sticking out of there. And I don't know if I can get you on camera to where you can really see that well. That pin is sticking up right now. What that's doing, this is the fuel pickup tube. And that little pin is plugging that orifice so that fuel cannot be sucked up through that or pressurized and blown up through that. So as I open this valve, now that pin has pulled back down into the tube and is allowing fuel to go up the tube into the rest of the mechanism. So that's how that functions. Inside of here, we're going to pull this out and there is a spring that, uh, how's that working? It's pushing it up. And what this thing does is goes and it has a, has a end on the tip of the knob out there that's shaped like a, a cone or a triangle. And as that goes in farther, how can I do this? So it's moving in that way. It's uh, pushing down on that valve and then letting that valve come be pushed back up by spring pressure like that. So that's what actually ends up closing. So it's a positive close and a spring pressure to open on it. So let's get this back apart. There we go. Put that away. Now most of the time you don't need to take the valve handle and this assembly out of there. Uh, there's a graphite packing in there that seals this um, so that fuel doesn't come out there and get pressurized out around the valve handle. If that is leaking, you will see fuel come out there. You might even get flames lighting it up and coming out. So if it's leaking, the first thing you try doing is tightening this nut down some, and that compresses that graphite packing a little bit more around here, and most of the time it will stop that leak. But if you don't, if that doesn't do it, then you're going to end up having to get a new graphite packing for that. And I know I've got one here, but it'll probably take me 30 minutes to find it. Um, but I'm to start with, I'm not going to do that because this can be serviced while the lamp is together. So we're just going to clean this mechanism up. We will take this apart uh, so I can get that pin out of there, or we can see that pin. Let me find the right wrench. I think that's it. And naturally, I don't have the right one with me, so we'll have to use the adjustable hammer here. There we go. They're not super tight ever because it's a fairly little uh, piece, but we'll take this apart. There we go. And now... That's what we have. So this rounded edge or top on this right here is what rides against the taper that's on the end of this shaft down in this area. As that taper moves that way, it pushes this down like that. And as the taper pulls back this direction, the spring pressure allows this to move up. And that's what moves it in and out of the hole down here at the bottom cutting off the flow of the fuel. So we'll pull this out. That's a very small needle going in there. Um, as you can see, this one does not get very dirty. Uh, usually because there's just fuel flowing by it and that fuel probably has a cleaning effect on it, I'm guessing. Um, this has got a tiny bit of corrosion on it, so we will clean that up. We should be in good shape there. There is a spring. There we go. So that spring right there. Um, oftentimes, like this one, if it sits over time with the valve closed, so there's a lot of pressure on it like this, the spring tends to relax and lose its uh, springiness to where it's uh, kind of just remains in that position. So what what I've been told is you grab these springs 
and gently stretch them a little bit. There we go, so that now that spring is significantly longer and actually puts a little more pressure on it. I'm going to go just a little bit more than that. I wish I actually had a number I could give you for what was the correct length that you have to stretch that spring to. But anyway, there's your spring. There's our uh, tube. There's no need to take that apart any further. We will want to clean it up. I think I'll probably drop it in some carburetor cleaner and let it soak for a while to clean up what's down inside of it. Now we've got uh, this part of our valve, which we're not going to need to mess with more than just uh, cleaning it. So we'll get back to that. Now, over here on this part, remember we've got this valve was stuck here. So I've got to figure out how to loosen that up without breaking anything in there. First we'll pull this nut off. There we go. Actually, it was a little looser than I expected there. We might be able to get that one out. <laughs> At this point, I'm going to put some PB Blaster on a couple of these threaded areas because I know they're going to need help. Yeah. Hopefully some of that will be able to soak in. So we can get those apart. I think we'll put some down inside here too, see if that helps loosen the cleaning mechanism up. pressure on that. I could heat this up and I may still to see if I can get some of that to work a little bit better. But uh, I may just let this sit uh, overnight with that PB blaster on it. That might in and of itself loosen things up for us there. Let's see. that's what I'm going to do. I don't want to push this any harder than I have to. In fact, at this point, really, I don't need to take all of this stuff apart. I just need to make sure that they're free of obstructions and that air flows freely through them. But for the sake of doing this, I probably am going to go ahead and try to get them the rest of the way apart. I just, uh, I have broken... I think it's this screw here once on one, and I'd prefer not to do that again. That one I can get heated up, and that, that will help a lot. I can probably get it busted loose. Um, it's really this pricker rod that I want to worry about right here that's inside the generator. And it's just not quite far enough out to be able to make the thing operate. So we'll set that aside, let that PB blaster work on it for a while. And at that point, that's really about as far apart as I'm going to take this thing. So my next project then will be to start cleaning things up. And I'm not going to waste a bunch of your time showing you that on camera unless there's some trick that I've learned. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll get this side inside and clean it up. Uh, well, my favorite thing here that I've introduced to is the Spray Dawn dish soap. 
it really cuts that soot better than anything else that we found. And so we're going to clean that up with this. Um, I got to get my fount back over here and get it cleaned up. I think what I'm going to do is go all custom on this one. And so I'm going to strip the paint off and uh, give it a nice purdy custom paint job. I have to do a couple little things here. This right here is kind of out of round, so we need to get that massage back into place. I'm looking for dents here, and I'm not seeing any. I do have a couple of tricks to use to get some of those dents taken care of. But I don't see any dents there. I'm not seeing any rust problems with this. This is actually a quite nice old lantern for as old as it is. Oops, still had a little fuel in it. A little bit of crud, so we'll work on cleaning that out. But uh, I think that's where I'm going to stop right at this point until I get the cleaning done. And then we'll come back and uh, show you where we're at as we're ready to put it back together. Well, we'll get this taken apart next time that I'm on camera. And... Uh, in the meantime, we'll be doing some cleaning and painting and things like that so that we're ready to go back together when I get all that apart. All right, be back in a minute. Okay, let's play around with this thing a little bit, see if anything's come loose on it here. Um, nah, that, well, that moved a little bit. Maybe we're starting to make some progress, but not good enough. I'm going to... Put some more uh, PB Blaster in that one. Um, what about these things? Let's see. Oh, and look at that. They actually loosened up really good there. So, there we go. Take those out. And these on this lantern are brass. So, we want to be careful because we can scratch them up real easily. What about the other one here? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Nice. I bet we won't get as lucky on these other screws, though. Let's see. I've got one there. Let's just see. Be miraculous if these are loosening up, but. Nope, I don't think so. What about this one? This one's going into brass. It might be. Aha! Uh -huh. Look at there. Ta-da! Now we have... This tube is screwed into this collar right here of the valve. And so we won't be able to unscrew it until we actually can get this uh, generator pricker out of there, which means we've got to get this working. So I'm going to spray some more uh, PB Blaster on some things here, and we're going to let it sit a little longer and uh, see what it takes to actually get it to free up. Sorry, you guys probably couldn't even see what I was doing. <laughs> a little bit in there, a little bit in there. A little bit down there. On those, and we'll go down in here, here. Let's see if that stuff has any luck penetrating. If it doesn't do it this time, we'll probably get some heat on that one. Uh, but I really want to get uh, this freed up here. That's my bigger priority. So we'll set that aside. Let's see. I'm wondering if we got these freed up any. Not 
feeling that one, so let's give them some more PD Blaster. Set them over there. As far as I'm going to go right for the moment, we will come back here. Actually, probably one of the next things I'm going to do is go inside and get this all cleaned up, get the soot cleaned off of it. As I look at the vent here, aside from the scratches or the chips in a porcelain, I'm really not seeing anything wrong with this one that I think with just a good cleaning won't uh, straighten up. Um, a lot of times you get something where like a plastic bag is laid on them or something has gone on them while they're hot that has burned to it. With those, the porcelain is so tough that you can literally take yourself um, a straight edge razor blade and just scrape off whatever it is and it will come off. It takes a little bit of work sometimes, but uh, it gets it off of there. So this will be our next part of our project. That I think will go clean up uh, this collar. here too so that I can straighten it up and I can go to polishing on it so those are going to be the next things we're going to be after all right I just had another thought here <clears throat> I think if I take this uh, nut loose right here what it's going to do is it's going to manually cause this to turn anyway which might push our pricker rod back up out of there so Let's give it a try. There we go. Got it broke loose. Now, watch that carefully. I think you can see that. Hey, it did it. Look at that. Push that pricker rod up where we want it to be. So now we can pull that out. I want to be gentle with it because of that little tiny wire on the end right there. All right. So we get that out. That will let us pull the generator tube out. Ta-da. All right. Which will then let us get this out of there. There we go. Now that tells me something. That tells me that our problem with this lever not moving is actually in the packing here. And it may be that just by heating this up, that I'll be able to loosen that back up and get that to work. So I will try that here in a minute, see if that works. Okay. In the meantime, will that come out of there? There we go. Yes, it will. All right. Okay. Now, does that leave us where this will break loose? Ta did. Ta da. <coughs> Excuse me. No, we're real cooperative though. So that then leaves us with getting that little screw out of there. And I think I'm going to have to use some heat on that. So I will get that all set up. I almost never take these out because I can clean them um, good enough uh, just while they're intact there. And I don't really see any reason to take it out. So I probably 
We'll leave that in, but I would like to get this tube out just because it's part of the disassembly process. So I will uh, get this thing heated up and see if I can get that screw to break loose on for us here. Okay, um, been doing a couple things here. So I've heated this and cooled it, quenched it, and put stuff in it, and I am not getting that screw to come out right there. And it's not really a big deal. There's there's not anything in here that really needs to be cleaned other than, you know, blowing air through there and making sure there's no um, obstructions on the inside of the tube. So I'm just not going to worry about it. I'd rather not break that screw. Um, and we'll go through and do the whole cleaning process on this later. But, uh, yeah, anyway, made several efforts at it, but it's not so important that I'm going to stress about getting it out of there. So I'm just going to leave it and uh, we'll come back to that one after a while. This deal, I've heated it up and actually got it to where the thing would turn all the way around when it was hot. But as it cooled back down, it uh, was tightening back up on me. So I'm going to pull this apart. I don't know if that's going to let us no, it's not freeing it up any. So I may end up having to do something else here to get that freed up to where it needs to be. I'm just, I'm not sure. May have to phone a friend on that one. That's actually not built the way that I thought it was. I was thinking there was another graphite packing in here. But apparently I'm mistaken on that one. So I'm going to see what else I can learn about how to clean that up and uh, get it to functioning properly. I really don't think there's anything wrong with it. I just think it's, it's gummed up with uh, carbonized fuel or something like that. So don't know on that one. I wanted to get it to that point. So we will do that. The other thing that you want to do, there's a long spring inside of here and this generator tube and they get carboned up over time and you can't get them out. In fact, I can't even for sure see that one down in there. Yeah, there's, there it is. Anyway, I'm going to try to get this spring out of there. You could just replace this uh, generator tube. Uh, they make uh, new ones. In fact, I've probably got one for this lantern sitting around, but... I just want to use it as much as I can. So, I'll get this nut off of here just for kicks and giggles. Get it out of the way. I'll take that little uh, <clears throat> pricker orifice out of the end of it. This one right there. We'll grab it by the end and it should just screw out of there. So, you have that. You want to make sure that the orifice, the hole that goes through it is clean. And I can see daylight through it. So I'm pretty confident that we're okay there. I'll probably clean it a little bit more. But uh, put that in there. Yeah, now I can see that spring in there better. So I will go in there and see if I can figure out how to get that spring out without ruining it. Because I definitely don't want to do that. If I, if I figure it out, then I'll come back and tell you on camera how I did it. Okay, let's talk a little bit here about how I'm going to clean some of these parts up. Um, I'm going to start out showing you this generator pricker valve. And you want to be super careful because that little tiny wire on there. So, I'm going to use just a piece of steel wool. And I'm going to grab it and pull it off of the end of it like that. And as long as I'm pulling straight off that little wire on the end stays protected you don't definitely don't want to come both directions or you'll bend it over and break it off but what you're after here is getting the build up off of the shaft of this thing and uh, we'll turn it around go the other direction a little bit and that one you can go both directions you just need to make sure you're protecting the little tiny pricker wire at the end 
but this gets a lot of carbon buildup on it because it's got fuel flowing around it all the time that uh, is vaporizing and uh, some of it actually probably burns in there to some degree or another and builds up carbon on the things makes it where it's harder for them to move up and down like they're supposed to that one we got it pretty well cleaned I have taken these to my wire wheel, but you got to be super careful with them and stay away from that end. And it tends to bend them. Even just the force of the wires hitting it tends to bend them. So I'm just going to stick with this. For what we're doing, this will be plenty. You can run your fingers along it and you can feel if there's anything there that's going to be catching on anything. And that one looks like that'll be perfectly functional now once we get the tube cleaned out. There's actually still a little bit of carbon buildup on there, and I don't know. I might take it over to my wheel and clean it up a little bit, but I want to, I'll definitely, you know, stay in this area here of it rather than trying to uh, get clear out to the end of it. So I'll go do that and be back in a second. All right, there we go. We got that uh, pretty well cleaned up there. You gotta be super gentle and super careful that you don't put too much force on it and how the, uh, you don't want the wheel to grab it for sure. You could probably do something like taking 400 grit sandpaper too and smooth that off if you wanted to do that, just it'd be safer. So anyway, that's what I've done there. So the next thing I'm really going to do, I'm going to take a bunch of these parts over to the wire wheel and clean them up um, just to get everything where we want it to be. I'm going to clean the brass part of this up. I'm not going to worry about the needle on it because it's in pretty good shape. Um, clean these parts of the valve up. Get this cleaned up. I'll probably clean the pump shaft up really good. I don't want to uh, booger up these aluminum parts that are on here. So I'll have to be careful about that. I will strip the paint off of the cap, both parts of it. Let's see. Yeah. First, I better show you about getting the uh, uh, cap seal out of that one. We'll do that in a second here. This is the nut that holds it all together. Uh, the bolt for the cap, little bolt. This is a nut for the top. I believe that's brass, so I'm just going to wire wheel it. What else do we have here? Oh yeah, there's the generator nut. We'll take care of that. And other miscellaneous little parts and pieces. Oh, here's another one. I'm not gonna worry about taking these apart. You Again, it's like this air tube over here. Really all that happens is air flows through here. And so uh, I guess down through these, you do get uh, the vaporized fuel, but you can look through them as long as you're seeing no obstructions down in there. You shouldn't have any reason to take that out. You might stick something down in there and clean it out. But I'm just going to wire wheel these so I get them back to looking pretty. Uh, they're not come loose. I know I could get them loose, but I don't want to scar them up with my pliers and wrenches and stuff to get them loose. So not necessary. So I'll clean those up. Uh, we'll clean this air tube up. That's what I'm going to do right now is get a whole bunch of the cleaning done. Then I'll come back and show you this and how to get that gasket out of there. There's two ways to do it. Uh, both have their pros and cons, but uh, we'll come back to that in a little bit. So I'll clean a bunch of parts up. We'll be back here to show you how that all looks. All right, you can probably see I got some stuff cleaned up in the background here, but let's talk about the cap seal right now. So you got it out of the main part of the cap. It's best to get it in a vise if you're going to try to do it this way, but you need something sharp, a pointed pick of some kind to uh, get out in there or down in there and break it out because it, uh, 
it's hardened up so it won't uh, I mean, this one's actually coming out better than most of them that I've done. But uh, you can get in there and break it up. I'm going to be careful not to bugger things up with your pick. Let's see, there we've got it about halfway around. And if you don't want to do this by trying to hold it in your hands, or you're going to end up putting the point of that pick through your finger probably more than once in the process. So the other thing that you can do with them is to take the thing, get your torch, and burn it out of there. And you're just going to get it heated up hot enough till that thing just smokes and turns to basically carbon. You can see it starting to swell up in there if you're looking close at it. I'm sure you can't see that on camera. But when you get it hot enough, it actually burns the whole thing to where once you then let it cool off, it just comes right out. Especially if you use a pick on it. Yeah, if you could see it there now, you would see that it's swelled up a lot. Um, and I definitely don't want to touch the thing. But uh, see there, it just pops out that way now because it's completely... back into its uh, carbonized state. So. Just makes it let go of the metal that it's attached to in there. All right, there we go. That's two ways to get them out of there. Now you gotta cool it off and then uh, I'm gonna go back and clean it up on the wire wheel too, so. I'll be back when I have that part done. There you go. You can see in there how we got it all cleaned out. All right. All right. Got her cleaned out there, ready to go. Yeah, so basically, you have two different kinds of caps on Coleman stuff, uh, on the newer stuff. Some of the older ones might have something different, but you've got the three-piece cap, which was made... I'm not even going to give you a date. This is an early cap. This is a single piece cap is a late cap. And they call this a three piece because you have the cap itself, you have the screw, and you have the inner piece that actually has a seal in it. On these new ones, the seal is just built into the cap itself. And you got to be aware that there's two different sizes of seals. So this is your older size right here. It's thinner. Um, this is your newer size for the single piece caps. So you got to make sure you get the right one so you're replacing the right things in the right places. But we're going to need this cap right here. And essentially, you're just going to fit it back on there. You want to get it around there and make sure it sits down in the groove correctly. And you see how that one's in right there and it's tight down that way, but it's not right here. So you gotta wanna make sure that you push that down in there and then back down in all the way around the middle too. And you just gotta work it in there all the way around. Pretty simple basic stuff here, but uh, that's really you know, really, when you're rebuilding one of these Coleman things, you can get by with not having to replace a lot of stuff in most cases. Usually, almost, well, almost always on the really older ones, this little seal is going to have to be replaced because the tank or the cap just won't hold air pressure in the tank. 
So there we've got that in there. It's not perfect, but I've got it all down in. So when I put it on there, on the tank itself and tighten it down, it's going to press that clear into place like it's supposed to be. But like I was saying, replacing this, um, sometimes you have to replace your pump cups and all the ones that I've done, I've probably only had to actually replace one or two. Uh, this is the rubber style one. They make leather ones, which were the old style. And frankly, the leather ones usually are more reusable than the rubber ones in a lot of cases. Um, and they are interchangeable too, by the way. So that's, uh, you got to replace those two things fairly frequently. Um, sometimes you'll need to replace the generator tube and the pricker. Uh, they make those, um, Generally speaking, those are the main things you'll have to replace. Occasionally, you're going to have a problem where you can't get the packing in here to seal, so you'll have to replace the packing. But really, that's about the extent of it. Uh, so, so far on this lantern, what I'm finding, and I've got that, uh, you know, my cap gasket replaced. I think that I'm going to be able to reuse this generator. I've not been able to get the spring out of it. But I'm going to go ahead and put it back together like this and uh, try to see how it runs. I think it'll be all right. I've not had to replace very many of them. But in case I do, then I'll have to do that later. Uh, I think this little booger right here is going to be my biggest problem. I still haven't got it freed up. And uh, I'm going to be working on that. I'm going to find out a little bit more about what I need to do there. But at that point, well... Still in the cleaning process. I have not cleaned my uh, vent or my collar yet, so I'm going to do those. Uh, paint's drying on my font. Fount. Fount, font, font. Yeah, I can never keep those two straight. I've got to go in and clean the valve wheel uh, up. So I'll probably get these three things cleaned up next. And then, really, once I get this little thing figured out, we're going to be ready to go back together with it. So... We'll stop right there. I will get some more stuff cleaned up. Well, let's just go with here. Here's all my nice, pretty brass pieces all cleaned up and ready to go back together. And I really like the way those turned out. Um, so, let me give you another thing here. When you're restoring a Coleman lantern, there's kind of three different uh, thought processes that different people have. I like to go get back to this shiny clean brass look here but i don't want to go to the trouble of actually polishing this brass back up now i might do that on one of my rare lanterns i don't know but these ones that i'm just playing around with and i'm um, gonna get them back to where they run the function they're gonna get burned in anyway and i don't really care so i use the wire wheel on them to get them to this point and then that's kind of where i leave them um, one thing you want to be aware of uh, the, I just put a new wire wheel on my grinder and it's a little more aggressive than the ones I've been using and it's tending to uh, mess them up a little bit more than uh, the wire wheel that I had before. So you want to be gentle. I, I haven't cleaned down in here because I don't want to take a chance of messing that up. Um, I'll probably clean this off a little better with some really fine sandpaper or uh, steel wool something like that because i just want to get them to where they need to be so that's the that's the two philosophies you can either wire wheel them like this or you can carefully clean them and polish them uh, which would probably be more accurate in a restoration uh, the other group of people don't want to do that they want to preserve the patina of them so you can clean them up uh, really uh, steel wool works really good for cleaning them out without changing the surface properties of the metal and uh, so that's another good option right there but you know what most of the lanterns that we're playing with are newer ones where there's still a lot of them out there so if you do one of these things or the other that might not appeal to a, a total 100 point restorer it's okay it's your lantern do what you want to do with it if you've got a rare one and you're trying to be careful about your restoration you probably don't want to clean them up the way that i did here you probably want to do it differently 
But remember, it's your lantern, and you do what you want to do with it. Um, if you're trying to clean it up and make it pretty so that you can resell it, then maybe you don't want to go this way. I don't know. You need to think through that, but just be aware. Do what makes you happy because that's what this hobby is all about. All right, I'll be back, get some more stuff cleaned up, uh, see if I can figure out what to do with this little beggar, and then we'll be ready to start putting it back together. Okay, I got this little uh, lever to work here. What I did was I took the nut off, and that was up inside of there, so I heated it up, and it, when it got hot, it started moving, so I started uh, using... I actually used some PB Blaster and then some of this WD-40 silicone down in it. And uh, got it to where it would move. And then I noticed that this little sleeve was moving, so I got it to pull out. And then I just uh, worked it a whole bunch of times with that lubricant sitting there so that it would kind of soak down into it. And then I turned it over like that and did the same thing. Filled this up with the lubricant and just... Turned it and turned it and turned it until I got it to where it would work pretty consistently. So I think we're okay there now. So I'm going to clean this up on my wire wheel. And then we will pretty much be ready to start putting things back together. So I will be back in a second. All right, let's see. There we go. Got that little guy cleaned up. Hopefully it's still functioning properly. Yeah. Okay. We're all good there. Here's my collar. Got it cleaned and polished up so it looks a lot nicer. My, yeah, infinitely nicer than what it was. Vent cleaned up very nicely. Aside from the chips that were in it, uh, really there's... Nothing wrong with it. We got the soot cleaned off the inside. And, oh, here's the little wheel. That thing cleaned up way better than it was. It was really grimy. A little spot there, too. But, anyway, cleaned up really nice. So, looks like a one piece I had laying around I forgot is I've got to go... I'm going to wire wheel this and paint this with a high-temp black barbecue paint in a gloss black um, could do silver in these uh, to get it back to the original it was uh, galvanized before but uh, because I'm customizing this I want it black I like the look it's going to match the other one that I've got done to make a pair of them so I'm going to go get that uh, cleaned up get the rust cleaned up off of it and uh, get it painted so we're ready to go with it all right, so that wraps us up for part one on the disassembly here. We'll see you back here next time as we start putting this thing back together.